So the first thing I wanted to talk about is um, if you have existing credit facilities at your bank, many banks have established um, payment relief programs, deferral programs, and are helping um, their existing customers. So I would um, strongly recommend that if you currently have credit products, that you reach out to your bank and understand what programs they are offering um, to help businesses. Also, if you do have an SBA loan, and I'm hoping one of our SBA experts later in the panel can speak to this, but I know that the SBA has already put out some guidelines for small businesses that already have SBA loans, what type of deferral programs and payment assistance there is for um, current SBA loans. So I would encourage everyone to, to start out with your local bank um, to see what programs that they have. Um, a program I wanted to speak quickly about is um, WAFED Bank. Um, we have set aside $100 million um, to capitalize a program for businesses affected um, by the coronavirus. Um, we are headquartered in Seattle, so our CEO and our bank was kind of on the forefront of this because Seattle was one of the first um, cities hit with the outbreak. So what we are doing is we have, um, if you have applied for a line of credit with us, we have 90 days interest free, so it'll be 0% um, interest for the first 90 days. And we are also expediting um, applications if you need $30,000 or less. Um, those are unsecured, so very easy, very quick to um, process. Um, we do have a link at wafed.com. I've shared it in there. You can just go to wafedbank.com and click on small business, and it will direct you to that particular program. Um, again, it's uh, up to $200,000 and it's 90 days at 0% interest. So that's, um, I know that that's what um, my particular employer is doing. Um, in addition to some other programs, um, there may be other banks and other financial institutions with programs. So again, if wherever you're banking as a business, I would check with that bank to see um, what they have. Um, the next product that I wanted to talk about is something that will be administered by financial institutions and other participating lenders, and that is the CARES Act SBA loan. And that is um, the one that was signed into um, law by the president, I believe, on the 27th, so just less than a week ago. And it does provide um, uh, funds um, that are forgivable. Um, to be used for payroll, mortgage interest, and utilities. Um, so I've outlined on the screen some of the um, basic um, tenants of the program. And on the next slide, um, we can talk about what um, businesses qualify. And uh, most of the businesses in, in Tucson and Southern Arizona will qualify, um, having fewer than 500 employees. Um, there's also some specific SBA size um, standards that if you um, are over 500 employees that you still may qualify. Um, generally for SBA loans, nonprofits are not eligible, but under this program they are. Also eligible are sole proprietors and independent contractors and self-employed persons. Um, and also the special 501c19 veterans organizations um, that meet the SBA size guidelines are also eligible to apply. Um, I have put up some resources um, for businesses to look at the specifics of the program. Um, the um, U.S. Chamber has a nice four-page guide. It walks you through who is eligible, what expenses are eligible, and how you are able to qualify for the loans to be forgiven so you do not have to pay back those loans. Also, um, the U.S. Treasury website um, at treasury.gov um, also has um, some good information about this particular program. It also has the application. Banks will be available to take this application for businesses beginning on Friday and for sole proprietors and independent contractors and self-employed, I believe it is the 11th that um, banks will be able to take um, application for this um, particular uh, relief program. Most banks and um, non-traditional lenders who are SBA qualified um, will be participating. I know um, myself, um, WAFED, we've done 504 SBA loans for years. We don't currently do 7A. Um, we have made application to be able to provide these loans. 
we're hoping to have our application approved today um, so that we can start processing on Friday. But again, I would, because um, there's something, um, the Bank Secrecy Act does apply to these loans, I would encourage you probably for the quickest turnaround to contact the bank that you're currently banking at. Again, if you have no luck, you may also try um, some other lenders that are not um, traditional banks. Um, I know Joel's on the line. Um, his company um, will probably be processing those as well. Um, so if you have any questions, I'm happy to entertain them. Okay, just, um, we can take questions. Joel will take questions. If all of you can see under participants at the bottom, there is a mute all, uh, unmute all, or, um, and also a raise your hand. If you could maybe raise your hand um, so that maybe Jill can see and take your question. What about using the chat at the end? Uh, just a thought, because I think there's going to be some redundancy. Okay. Um, explanation. So generally, I, it works to do the questions at the end, if that's okay. That's absolutely fine. Sure. So Ellen, are you and ready I, to go, or do you want me to have Leslie go? I did send you the PowerPoint. I was okay, able to send check it. it real quick. Okay, because I think I've, I've got a lot of um, information that would be broad. So and addresses some of the things that Jill was wondering about. The, Jill, I like uh, the, the loans that you're doing. I know that you want folks to be a customer of the, of the bank, but those loans I think I'm finding are helpful um, for some of the smaller companies. And when I say small, of course, SBA, that's 500 or less, but you know what I mean, smaller mm -hmm. companies. Ellen, did you send, just let me interrupt real here. Okay. Did you send that to Carol A. Gatewood at gmail.com? Uh, Gatewood, okay. Just a second. No, oh, um, WAFED is willing to help customers and non customers for the CARES relief as well as um, for the special program that we have that's 90 days at 0% interest. Um, we'll be processing applications for all that apply. Um, you can go on our website now and sign up to be contacted um, for when we do have our approval to begin processing. Okay, good. Okay, cool. Okay, it should have gone, Carol. Yeah, I'm waiting for it. I just sent it. Well, I think, Leslie, you have a pretty specialized area. If you don't mind, maybe you can go less, next and we'll figure this out. <laughs> okay. Um, I guess if we can just check that email address again, because Jill's came through absolutely fine. Carol with the C, C-A-R-O-L, A, G as in great, A, <laughs> E E W O O D at gmail dot com. Gmail .com. Okay, I will send it once more. All right. And did you want Leslie to go ahead, or did you want me to try it again? No, I think Leslie can. Um, I think it's she has some very great specific things. If that's okay, Leslie. So I'd like to introduce Leslie Pinter. She's the executive director for Growth Partners Arizona. And her topic this morning is, so you need to borrow money, but how? Actually, you know, as Ellen has pointed out a couple of times, things have moved and changed so quickly over the last few days since I sent that in. I wanted to pivot just a little bit about my comments because I knew Ellen and Jill were going to really dig in and cover these federal programs and the details about how to apply to those, and, and it's fantastic information out there. Um, so it's, that's really important for everybody to pay attention to that right now. My organization is a nonprofit 
uh, Community Development Financial Institution. We're certified by the U.S. Treasury. And so we're mission focused. Um, our main mission and our priority for borrowers is folks who are in, located in low to moderate income communities and who either are um, owned by or employ or serve folks in low to moderate income areas and, and minorities. So that's our uh, main focus. Um, and many, many locations in the state or in the uh, in Pima County qualify under that, unfortunately. Um, so we have three different programs that we offer. Um, first of all, our and what we're known for and historically have done is loans for nonprofit organizations because nonprofits um, traditionally have a little bit harder time finding funding, uh, debt funding through traditional sources because they often don't have collateral and they certainly don't have uh, owners who can guarantee the loan. So uh, that's kind of our, our key program. But we've recently just launched two small business development programs and one is called our Small Business Success Loan uh, and the other is uh, an online crowdfunding program through Kiva US, and many of you may have heard of Kiva, but we are now a hub here in Tucson, which means we have an employee boots on the ground who can help people who are interested in loans, very small micro loans of a thousand. Uh, they've now expanded it during the crisis to up to 10,000, excuse me, $15,000. And those loans are crowdfunded uh, online. And so people in the community like you and me can be lenders on that platform to help our fellow uh, business owners here in town and help those uh, organizations survive. Those loans are all at 0% interest and zero fees. They always are, regardless of the economic situation. Uh, so people who invest and loan to local businesses um, through that platform don't receive a return, but those folks tend to be social impact investors. They just want to help their neighbors uh, and friends become successful businesses in the community. Um, so that's a really great program. Uh, our small business success loan, we're, we're modifying slightly during the crisis um, to, uh, we offer loans from $10,000 to $75,000. And we're offering um, no application fees initially, interest only for the first six months, um, after which the loan goes back to our, our traditional uh, structure. And you can learn more information about all of those programs on our website, which is growthpartnersaz.org. Uh, we are not an SBA lender, uh, so we will not be directly assisting with these SBA programs that both Jill and Ellen are talking about, but we are affiliated with the Business Development Finance Corporation, which is an SBA lender and will be um, uh, uh, handling all of the loan requests that you have either seven through the 7A debt relief program or the uh, paycheck protection program. So go check that out as well. Um, the, the other things I wanted to talk about a little bit this morning are maybe to look forward a little bit. I know everybody's um, stressed and in crisis mode and trying to figure out how to navigate um, whatever the next several months are going to be, but it's not too soon to start thinking about what happens um, as we come out on the other side of this thing. So I wanted to take that tack a little bit. Um, first of all, to uh, it's all of us, whether we're providers of credit or looking for credit, we all need to be um, really patient with each other right now. Literally, um, as Ellen and Jill have both mentioned, things are changing, sometimes on an hourly basis. Programs are being approved by Congress, but as we all know, the devils are in the details, and those details are still being figured out. Um, all of your banks, your lenders, your um, whoever you're working with, folks like the Small Business Development Center, everybody's learning how to administer these programs. And frankly, there aren't any more people at any of these organizations than there were three weeks ago before all of this happened. So. Um, there's a lot of demand for um, a lot, there's, there's going to be bottlenecks in other words. There's, there's a lot of demand and, and there's still the same amount of people who are processing. So everybody is working really, really hard to um, administer this, get money out the door to all of you as quickly as possible. 
And so we just all need to be patient with each other and with ourselves as we navigate this together and figure out how to do it. Um, but what do you what do you do next after all of this? Um, I, I, my biggest piece of advice to everybody is not to think just um, very very short term. Um, be thinking, okay, if this thing lasts for ninety days, what do I need to do as a business, and how do I recover after that? What if this is going to last for six months? Oh my! Oops. <laughs> Mostly disappeared. <laughs> Leslie, did you, you get my PowerPoint? Did you get my PowerPoint? Um, yes, I did. How are, how okay. are you going to um, repay any of these loans that you're getting that you're going to have to repay? Some of them are forgivable, obviously. Um, so initially, I think for, for most businesses and nonprofits, the way to go is to take advantage of these federal programs that are coming out because they are so favorable and uh, much of it is money that will not need to be repaid. So go after what you can there. Um, an organization like mine is certainly available now, but I think our biggest um, the, the way we're going to be able to help the most is as people start to come out of this period and recover and rebuild. And I think that's where we'll come into play. Um, I did want to uh, say a plug to any of you on the phone who are, are nonprofit organizations. It's great that the SBA and the federal government are allowing you to be participants in this federal relief funding. That's fantastic. There's another uh, option out there that you may or may not be aware of called the Arizona Together for Impact Fund. Um, it's not only a fund, it, it's available to assist nonprofits who want to do things together to collaborate and partner, perhaps even eventually merge, but more importantly, conversations about how can we share um, back office support? How can we share maybe some programmatic things? Um, so it's a really good resource out there. Go check it out online, um, Arizona Together for Impact Fund. And I will stop there and let Ellen do her thing. <laughs> hey, good job, Les. Your... Can you all see my screen sure. now? Yep. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Just tell me when you need me to click to the next slide. <laughs> OK. Uh, yeah, next. And MC. All right. So I'm the director for the Small Business Development Center. And if you go to the next slide, I talk a little bit about what we do. So we're funded. Why I probably have a lot of information is because we are funded by the SBA. So we're getting all the communications. Uh, so we're funded by the SBA, by Pima Community College, and the Arizona Commerce Authority. So we are able to provide no cost. So I never use the word because free sounds value and, and this is not free we are funded and so we have no cost one-on-one -on -one counseling and small businesses up to 500 employees and that's by the way that's 94 percent of Tucson and so we serve Pima and Santa Cruz County okay next this is our team um, the director Karen Burns and Rick Loveland are also counselors and Shelly Martinez is our administrative assistant so the disaster recovery loans were the first ones that came out, and these are funded by the SBA. And um, there's, uh, I'm going to go into detail on each of these. The Paycheck Protection Program loans, uh, that's coming through the Treasury, and that was the stimulus package that was $2 trillion. And then there's some emergency grants, and um, those, again, are funded by the SBA. You probably somewhere along the way in your um, company or certainly bankers hear that uh, SBA takes everything but your firstborn child. They're being really uh, understanding through this process. So for the disaster relief loans, they sign or by mail. So let me tell you what happened there. So stop and think with the uh, SBA that disaster loans have typically been isolated to an area. So it might be a flood. 
in Louisiana or those kinds of things, and just think of the manpower and what it would take to help those folks. Now we're talking about the whole country. So SBA does not have the bandwidth either from an IT standpoint for all the volume they've been receiving, and they didn't have the people. So they were working on both. They were looking to hire people. And so being understanding, I know that people's needs are immediate, um, but this is taking more time to go through the SBA process. Um, but there's some very good things about it. I did want to mention, um, Leslie, especially for you, the early stage companies are included. Um, and then uh, midway uh, last week, they said no tax returns are required. When you sign a 4506 form, that allows them to go right to the uh, IRS and get the, so that really cuts down a lot of uploading or mailing. Only reimburse expenses. This isn't meant to be to use for whatever. And so it's really important that people understand that. There is a one year deferment on payments. Unlike the other loan I'll talk about that has forgiveness to it, uh, this one does not. <laughs> and because it's taking so much time, there is a $10,000 bridge loan available. Okay, Nick? All right, so I can't stress this enough, having been a 35-year banker, <laughs> that if, you, if the file's not complete, they're going to put it in another stack, you're going to go to the bottom, and they will get to it at some point. So having a really complete package, all the links that are available um, it, are very good as to what I'm and um, at the end I have contact information. If you want to know what you know these links are, we can send them to you. Um, but absolutely everything has to be complete. You cannot leave anything out or you're going to go to the bottom of the stack. Um, you need to estimate your losses. And this is the case with this particular loan that there is cloud required. If you have it, they're going to take it. So be aware of that, that what that says is, and the reason they do that is uh, it's a protection that if you, you know, do not perform on the loan, they have assets. But it's also from your perspective, you know, for, for clients' perspective, it um, basically says, I believe in this loan. So that's the things that it accomplishes. Okay. All right. That's the disaster loan. And um, I don't know, if, can you go back one? I did want to mention that because some of these are taking so long, maybe I have another slide. Um, there is a $10,000 um, loan, bridge loan, that's available while these things are being processed that go quicker. So, um, again, can get you more information on that. On the, um, yeah. Need that last point. Okay, so um, so complete, complete, all of that. Okay, the Paycheck Protection Program. So this is the one that the Treasury is funding and banks are facilitating, and it has to be an SBA approved bank. I've been on the phone all morning with clients. Not one of them is with <laughs> a bank that's an SBA approved lender. I think a number of the, uh, some credit unions are, some are not. Uh, that, I think a lot of it was that. So if um, clients do not um, have a banking relationship with an SBA approved lender, then they need to find one. And so that's what um, a couple of these folks are having to do. So the first thing they want to do is uh, find out from their lender if they're approved. When we work with our clients, I have a list of the approved lenders and um, I can help my clients with that. So these loans are funded by the Treasury through banks. It's supposed to start on Friday. Um, all things working well, we will see, but it will certainly should be close to that. Um, there are uh, the second tier lenders and community lenders, 504 program. These are um, things that have been available, um, but that doesn't have a direct relationship to the um, disaster loans. However, there are within these programs some deferments. So you want to find out, so clients want to find out from their lenders if there's a deferment. Some of them are 90 days, some six months, and so it's worth checking into it. I know the SBA has deferments, so it certainly would apply the 504. 
So what are lenders looking for from the client? In this case, and this is an interesting one for me, um, and let me tell you why, and you won't find this in writing, <laughs> um, is that the governor yesterday issued an edict that people need to work from home. So this loan is particularly, and this is a forgivable loan, so it's, it's a terrific program, but I, for instance, I have a client who has a salon kind of business, and they had to close the salon, and he had to lay off his employees. So he will not qualify for this because he doesn't have current employees that this loan is helping them keep on, keep on board. So if it's a business and they can't function, so this is really, it's very, that's a very important point for people to understand that this is the pay tech, paycheck protection. There are some things that go with this separately in terms of unemployment. You probably have read unemployment benefits are up. So that, that's been helpful. Um, and, and there's some other smaller benefits. So, um, the, and so lenders looking for from the client, it's going to be a, a, a traditional bank package. And that's what we do when we say when's the right time to work with the SBDC. It's when they're trying to put that package together, we review it with them, make sure nothing's left out because, again, they, they are going to have volume that they, it needs to be easy for them to work with. And so we work with clients every day of the week in putting together loan packages so that they can get done more quickly and not get put in a stack. Okay. Um, so what this program does cover, and Jill mentioned some of this, uh, it covers the cost of retaining employees, and what they're supposed to do is retain these employees through the whole crisis. Um, and, that's, and so there's forgiveness up to eight weeks of payroll, so that's pretty generous. It's 100% federally guaranteed because of the Treasury funds. So the Treasury will fund the bank, and the bank funds the client. No SBA fees. And there is a six-month deferral of payments available. Um, the the uh, forgiveness comes later, um, after some performance takes place. Okay, next. Okay, can companies apply for both? Yes. And um, some of that is as much timing as anything. Uh, most who would qualify for the disaster um, or for the PPP would uh, would qualify for the disaster, maybe not the other way so much around. So where can we find help? This is, um, and um, Carol, I guess you can send this out to the attendees the, uh, so they have this contact information. I will figure out some way to do that, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so uh, Shelly Martinez is on our team. She's our magic. <laughs> uh, she's taking all uh, inquiries. Um, this is her email is best, as you can imagine, the volume. But also she's going to be just should be taking information. So this is the phone number you can reach her. And uh, you want to mention you're on this webinar so that if you need assistance, I will directly be helping you. Also, she will give information for people to register with the SBDC, um, and that helps us work with our clients and have that information. That's pretty much it. I think you can see it. this changes by the day. I'm just a voracious reader of everything that comes across. So um, at the end with the chat, I'll be glad to answer any questions. Ellen, yes, Leslie. Can I ask a couple clarifying questions um, about a couple of things that you said? Um, so, on the, it's my understanding that on the payroll protection program, um, you mentioned that example of your salon owner. If that salon owner, tell me if this is incorrect, um, if that salon owner retained those employees and got this uh, payment protection program loan to keep them on. Uh, for the next eight weeks, um, that that could be forgivable, and then that way there wouldn't have to be layoffs, and they could contain continue to have employees. Is that um, a correct assumption or understanding? 
Well, along with that loan comes, you know, the other expenses that you might have. But if they have nothing to do, and, you know, they can't work off-site, which all of us are doing, you know, and there's not anything for them to do. I'm not saying that couldn't be done. Uh, I think if there's something that employees could do, the whole point is they are trying to keep employees working. Um, so are, you, are you saying then that the employees have to actually be physically doing something to be retained? Well, to call since we have that? home kind of thing, you know, this edict that we have, um, it just, um, I've asked that question, I don't have an answer yet because it's, it's such a valid point. That's why as I read this and I think about who will be eligible for this, I've already laid them off. Some are already collecting unemployment. Um, there isn't a function they can perform, you know, to earn income. So um, it's, I, don't, I don't know how far and deep this was thought about with those kinds of companies, and they're the ones that basically were first told, you know, to shut their doors, remember? I mean, they were some of the, and, and they're being, you know, it's an edict to do it, so. Right, and it's my understanding, too, that employers can rehire employees yes. by a certain date and qualify for this program. Correct. Leslie, I think that is correct. Um, if they re and the quote that is on the Treasury website is they rehire quickly. Um, so I don't know what the definition of rehire quickly. They let everyone go last week. If they apply and rehire them next week, but I don't think they have to be working at the business since businesses are shut down. Um, if they were open, obviously they'd be paid. Um, but this is if they don't need to be working, but just be on the payroll. Okay, so they could qualify. Um, yes. Another question is... Um, I'm, I'm going to ask that question because I think that's kind of an important differentiator because to pay someone who is not working, I don't know if that was the intent of this. Um, you know, they, what they're trying to do is encourage employers. I, I think this bill could have been a lot broader. It's just my two cents. <laughs> um, and um, been written a little bit different, but this is what it is. Their, their intent is that, you know, companies right away realize I'm not going to be able to pay rent, I'm not going to be able to pay utilities, I'm not going to be able to pay the bills. I've got, I do not have business coming in for my employees to work, so the natural thing to do is to lay them off and they collect unemployment. So um, I, the intent was they wanted to get as many employers keeping employees employed. Uh, but this, the notion that they'd be employed to do nothing you know, is kind of an interesting thought, don't you think? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure there's so, I don't know this for sure, this is my own editorial, but just what I've been hearing from different webinars is the goal is just to keep people um, with enough money flowing so that they can survive this. And so if that's the intent, I don't know that they necessarily care if people are doing anything, it's just that people have money flowing. That don't take that to the bank. I don't know the answer. I have two more questions, Ellen. Clarifying questions. Um, it's my understanding too with the PPP that there's not a full package application package. It's a matter of filling out a, a page application and certifying the, your uh, your eight week. Oops, are you there? Hello. So with to answer her question. Um, let me shut off my phone. To answer her question, um, with the okay, let me go back. So, are you back, Leslie? I'm here. Can you not hear me? Yeah, you, we well, didn't hear you. At the end of your. Can you ask the question again? Yeah, um, I'll just ask the two questions. One was it was my understanding that for the PPP, there's not really a full application package per se. <clears throat> The, the borrower needs to fill out an application and then submit proof of eight weeks of payroll and certify to that. And that's the extent of the application. Uh, my second question relates to being able to apply for both the disaster assistance and the PPP. You do that, but you can't double dip on the same expenses. Right. Is that well, right? I mentioned you can apply for both, but they will not duplicate. So if you're asking for rent on one, you can't ask for rent on the other. Um, in terms of what's required in, as a package, 
none of that's released yet. We get we get updates from the SBA three or four times a day, being okay. part of the SBA. And um, it's been pretty clear that that's not all set yet. And and I would also say that there's there's minimum requirements, especially with the PPP, because they're going to want payroll records. So the the bankers that I've talked to um, are asking for some financial information. Um, and again, it's going to be a more lenient process, but they are collecting information. Um, but they will base it on what, um, you know, the requirements are. So that's not clear yet. That's what's coming out on Friday. Thank you. Okay. So are we ready? I don't know much left. Do we want to look at the chat questions? So, oh, Jill, I know they were asking about collateral. I think we answered that, or it was asked um, early. Yes, um, for the loans um, under the CARES Act, the ones that are forgivable, there is no personal guarantees and no collateral. Right. But on the um, disaster recovery loans, those do require collateral. So the, the PPP is very favorable. Um, I do want to get some clarity on the layoffs of com if they've already laid them off, they bring them back on. Um, I will get some clarity on that. Again, I think until Friday, we're going to have just so much information until that comes out. Uh, S corps do qualify. It can be an LLC. It can be an S corp. So, um, and it says, I keep reading about LLCs. Actually, an LLC can be an LLC and a S corp at the same time. The S corp is a tax designation, uh, where the LLC is a protection against. Um, as a person, you can't be, so you won't be sued personally. Just the company. So that's one thing. The LLC, the SBA is a tax vehicle for paying as an individual versus um, corporate taxes. Um, so we asked. Um, so Jill, you answered that question. Uh, and then Leslie, uh, from Leslie to everyone, business. Did you ask a question here, Leslie? The business no. development finance is an SBA approved lender, or you were just saying it? I was just saying it because somebody was asking about it somewhere along the line. Yeah. Um, and with the list of approved banks, that should again be coming out on Friday. If, if you want to run something by me, I'm glad to answer it. So. I have permission to release that, but again, I think that's all going to come out on Friday with a listing, and it's by state. Ellen, yes. if you can get some of that information to me on Friday then, I can then email it out to all of our participants today. Okay. Yeah, and I have, I, did, I think I had sent some tools before, but um, I will send you, there's a three-step process that I think has been the cleanest <laughs> piece of information so far, and that's for applying for the disaster relief loans. It's really well written, so I will send you that. I'll go through what I have for attachments and send you what I think um, won't be duplicative, okay? All right. Yeah, I just have a quick question for you guys. Um, <clears throat> we are getting a lot of calls on a daily basis from small businesses. Um, there seems to be confusion regarding the forms. I've heard forms that are like six or seven pages long. I've heard forms that are six questions long. Um, why isn't there more consistency and what can you tell me about the differences of the forms that they're filling out for SBA and PPP loans? So the longest forms that you're gonna see are the disaster relief loans. Um, so that's a pretty, that's a more ex, um, extensive list. Um, as we're talking about with the PPP, that will be according to what the bankers are asking for. On the um, the ten thousand dollar bridge loan, um, that's reduced documentation. But pretty much for the disaster loan, um, you know, we're we're talking. Uh, uh, it, it's not onerous, but it's not also two pages. That help? Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. Can hear you, Leslie. You're on mute, Leslie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
I need to mute. I haven't done that. I did that a while ago. I, I heard from somebody yesterday who said she started applying Friday and was gathering all of the information that she needed over the weekend to go upload it and went in Monday and the process was completely different and much simplified. So I think yes. part of the issue is, again, things are just changing every day and they're trying to make it easier and more accessible and more efficient constantly. Mm -hmm. Well, at, at the example being, you know, tax returns, because that was the biggest part of uploading. And so when they eliminated that, that was great. So I think until they get in there and they're underwriting, um, again, I, you know, underwrote a lot of loans. Um, they, they are learning what do they have to have because just from a pure time element, if it's a huge package, it takes time. What are the necessary things for me to see this is a company that really needs this money and can pay us back with it being more liberal? Yeah. Hey, Alan, I've got another question for you. Um, when we talked, gosh, I guess it was two weeks ago, um, we, we obviously knew that there was going to be some slowdown for the SBA website. Um, First question is, has that been um, remedied? I know like over the weekend uh, or a couple weekends ago, it was down. And then also when we talked, um, you were telling me that on a normal timeline, the fund transfer is about three weeks. Uh, what are you seeing now as far as timelines for getting funds for some of these businesses? As far as I know from the first of this week, I, I don't believe loans have even been funded, but this is the third week. It's taking more like two to three weeks to get approvals, where initially it was going to be three days approval and three weeks disbursement. And I think they really intended that, but they had no idea the volume they were going to get and all the steps they need to go through. So I wouldn't tell anyone to expect uh, any disbursements under a month, um, at probably at the best. So um, that's why they came up with the bridge loan for $10,000. I, I, I know that will help a lot of companies. That will be a drop in the bucket for some, like for payroll. Uh, but again, maybe they can, they can do both loans. So if they need to do the payroll one, and then on the, um, the SBA disaster relief, get that bridge loan, that's how you know, the, the longer time frame is going to be helped. Carrie, did you have a question? Unmute yourself. You. Yes, I just did. Thank you. Um, I have a. Qu My question is: Is with the variety of different options out here, do you recommend that businesses talk with their accountant to better direct them to what would be best for them, or just apply for all of them? Oh, uh, I again, I think I'll come back to the SPDC and. Um, probably a better tool. The accountants can help if they need some help with their financial statements and what's being submitted. But I don't see the accountants playing a big role in this. Um, so I think, you know, the one-on-one -on -one counseling to answer any questions would be better. Um, that's my thought. And there is also... A, a, we have the SPDC, we have the Women's Business Center that helps women-owned businesses, and we do have SCORE. So um, the SBA has three agencies that are available to help. Do we have any other questions from the group? Leslie, I can't hear. <laughs> Uh, sorry, there was a question on the chat from Jesus Gonzalez about um, dividends paid to officers, and I I don't know the answer to that question. I'm, I have a document here that talks about um, what's included on payroll costs um, and what is excluded. Um, I don't know if we can send out the document to everyone. It was put out by the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, um, and it's a four-page um, document that um, goes over some of the basics of the program. Um, I could read it <laughs> um, down the list here. Um, wages, commissions, and similar compensation, um, tip or equivalent, um, vacation, paternity, family. Um, let's see. Um, it says for sole proprietors, independent contractors, and self-employed, some of payments of any compensation 
to or income of the sole proprietor independent contractor that is wage, commission, income, net earnings from self-employment or similar compensation, not to exceed 100000 So um, as far as the as um, dividends to officers, it doesn't say it's included, but it doesn't say it's excluded. So um, I think that's one of those things that um, needs further clarification, and it might come out later this week on Friday. I, I would think if it's if it's dividends that act like wages, um, you know, you may have structured it that way um, for whatever reason in your corporate structure, but if it's if it's really how your officers get paid, it's kind of like their salary, I would think you'd be able to make that uh, justification for it. If it's dividends like extra money because you were profitable, um, I've again, I'm editorializing, I don't know. I would guess that something like that may not qualify, so it, it's probably unclear. Ellen, unmute. Got it now? There you go. Okay. Okay. So on sub S corporations, uh, people are taxed on the, the profit of the business. And so um, and it, what they have to claim on their tax return is what's going to be taken a look at. So um, if they get dividends, that's a part of, ordinary, a part of income. So um, when they take a look at the tax returns, then they will be including um, those things. But for the business itself, um, it, you know, and the loans being made to the business, not to the individual. So it really is the business uh, profitability that the underwriter is looking at. And one other thing I wanted to mention is um, for social uh, proprietors and independent contractors and self-employed. Those applications um, are going to open up, I believe it's April 11th. I'm anticipating that we're going to have guidance for people that fall into those categories, um, what's eligible, what's not eligible in a different application because the current application that is out there for the CARES Act loans aren't really um, tailored for those types of um, entities and individuals. Um, so I imagine that more information for um, people that fall into those categories will be forthcoming. Yes, and that's true. So um, this whole thing really is, you can't take a look at what a typical SBA loan is and compare it to now. They're making all kinds of exceptions and want to try and accommodate as many as they can. And oftentimes, um, you know, individuals and independent contractors find it difficult to get some loans. So they've really opened up the floodgate, if you will, and are being very um, open-minded about trying to help as many as they can. Any other questions? I, I, I'm gonna piggyback on what Ellen just said. Um, based on a couple of webinars I attended earlier this week, both from the US Chamber of Commerce um, and I've been on so many now, I can't remember where, but representatives of, of Congress people who put this all together. The goal really is to help people. So I think they're gonna try more often than not to figure out a way to get the money out instead of ways to say no to people. Um, and, and so if you have questions about things, just you know, just go for it and ask for it and, and um, make a justification for it um, and don't be afraid to, um, to, to go for it because they really, really are trying to help. I, I totally agree, Leslie. And um, Jill, to your point earlier, I, the information from the U.S. Chamber is fine to send out. That wasn't specific <laughs> to us. So when we get this information, I've been going through them. For anyone who's had specific questions, then I send them you know, like this, like I mentioned, the uh, the one documents that's the, the uh, three um, three helpful hints. That's the best one for disaster relief. There's some we can we can inundate people because they get confused um, when they're going through the process. It can be so confusing. So it's really better that they work with one situation. I'm applying for this, 
the, I, when I go on the site, they're going to tell me this is exactly what I need, put it all together, upload it, and not worry about the rest of it. Um, it's, it's pretty um, explicit as to what they need to do. So, um, again, the biggest thing in terms of you giving advice is it has to be complete. You leave something out, you're going to not be in the queue. And if you have to wait, it can be a long time. So the most important thing is, and if um, we, we're working with some clients and we do some review, um, so if, you know, if they're concerned that they're not sure, they've done everything right, <laughs> some things they may never have had to do before, um, you know, then we can help. Okay, then. Um, so, Ellen, I'll be looking for some uh, information from you, and I will get that out to everyone. Um, I want to let everyone know that you can go to Tucson Metro Chamber's uh, website. We have tons of information available for you there. We have a Knowledge at Noon going every day, starting at noon. Please go and see what uh, our future topics are. Tomorrow is we have um, Tim Medkoff. He's a managing partner with Farhang and Medkoff. And his presentation will be navigating the impacts of COVID-19 for small businesses. So if you'd like to join us for that, please go and register. And uh, we will see you again tomorrow at noon. He's amazing. He is amazing. <laughs> Great. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you.